Um, John, you take a look at these numbers. Again, a little concerning to hear about the weak demand, but this shows that FedEx is operating well and, and really managing to, to do some good management here. Well, you're absolutely right about the former part. I mean, the, the, the revenue fell short. The earnings beat for the fiscal second quarter was strictly from the cost side, $200 million more than anticipated, even by the company itself back in September. Um, but when you look at the guidance for the rest of the year, there's an extra billion dollars of costs that are incorporated in that. So if you strip that out, which wasn't anticipated, uh, it does show the demand side is much weaker. So I think FedEx is in the early stages of their cost response. Um, you know, clearly what happened in September was a shock to everybody, the magnitude of the miss and the guide down. Uh, there is a little bit of a, a prove me story here. It did happen a little bit in the second quarter with that 200 million of extra costs. We'll have to see if the 2.5 billion of extra costs now in the second half of the year can be appropriately done, executed, uh, and enough to offset this demand weakness. What do you think the job of the new of the new CEO? How's he doing so far? Well, it's early stages, and it's been a rough economic backdrop, uh, especially to to start uh, this role. Um, it's been a little bit reactive. Um, you know, we have first investor day in 10 years in June. Uh, pretty great uh, expectations for the next three years introduced. A five-year plan, uh, again, with very robust expectations, and then we're hit by this demand collapse uh, almost immediately. So it's been more reactive, I think, than proactive or strategic. Uh, again, a uh, very positive sign, I think, in the second quarter uh, with the ability to beat the bottom line despite the demand being weaker than expected. So we'll see. I think the jury's still out, but uh, a very positive early sign. In your most recent note, you actually lowered your uh, 23 and 24, uh, 2023 and 2024 earnings expectations. Based on what you heard last night, you still sticking with that? Absolutely. I mean, the most recent note was was post last night. So there's really three moving parts here. The cost side, uh, obviously, adding another billion dollars for the second half of the year is pretty meaningful. Um, but the other two sides, the revenue story, the volume side is obviously much weaker. If you look at most of the uh, package categories for the fiscal second quarter. They came in weaker than expected in 2Q. They're talking about an accelerated downturn into the early part of 3Q. And we're going into a seasonal you know, weakness. We're, we're coming out of the holiday period in a couple weeks now. So the next quarter should be weaker anyway. Uh, and, on the, and on the yield side, the pricing side, they've done exceptionally well there, but they're going to come up against some very difficult comps. And fuel also goes into the yield side as well. So especially when you look at international, Asia particularly, there's a chance where the yield or the pricing can kind of uh, flash negative going forward. So great news on the cost side, but it's almost uh, out of necessity because the top line is weaker than expected. Well, the CEO, Raj Subramaniam, said that we, we're entering what he is expecting to be a worldwide recession. Um, how much of that call is already kind of worked into the stock price? Oh, I think a lot of that has worked into the stock price, but there's also an, an element of uh, FedEx execution as well. I mean, look at their biggest competitor. They're facing the same economic challenges that, that FedEx is, uh, but they certainly don't have the margin pressure that FedEx does. I want to be clear on the uh, worldwide economic recession part. You know, we have a, a legendary economist at Evercore ISI uh, who's forecasting 0% GDP growth for the U.S., and there's probably a downward bent to that. Uh, but he's been saying Europe and, and Asia is already in recession. So I think it's important to not cast a wide net here. There's certain regions that have uh, much more dire economic scenarios than we do here in the U.S., uh, and I guess the jury's still out on how quick and, and deep that might be. So you've got an overweight on this stock, but you said they don't have, they have bigger uh, margin pressures than their biggest competitor. What do you think of UPS shares? Well, UPS, we have an inline on those shares. I mean, I, I, I walked through this internally with our group uh, on Monday morning. You know, companies and management and stocks are two different things sometimes. Um, and the fact is that UPS has done a much better job reacting to the demand weakness. They've, ter they've taken their costs out much quicker, seem to have a much better handle on it, uh, and have been more flexible with that, which means their margins hold up better and their earnings hold up better. Uh, but the stocks also held up better as well. So, uh, you know, the gap between the multiples on these two stocks, and, you know, admittedly, FedEx is in the doghouse for a reason. Um, or I should say the penalty box for a reason because of what happened in September, um, the bar is much lower there. So there's much more uh, ability to kind of revert on the margins and in the EPS. And if they execute, you know, most of that, then I think there's more upside to the stock. But clearly from a, a management perspective, UPS has done a better job handling this downturn.